Annyeong! Welcome to Delightful! I thought I'd put together an Eevee Lucian's overview video to talk about the series and some afterthoughts about each doll. So this was the first series to be created on the channel, and between drawing up the concept art, letting you guys vote, making the actual doll, and editing the videos, each doll took about a month. There's nine dolls, and I started in February with Sylveon. Of course, there were a couple videos sprinkled in between. I didn't want my non-Pokemon fan viewers to get completely washed away by Pokemon-only content, so yeah, about eight months. That may seem like a slow pace, but I'm glad I took my time with each one. Messing with well-established characters like Pokemon can be dangerous because, of course, you want to do it justice and hopefully create a version most fans of the franchise agree looks good and adequately represents the original, while still having fun exercising your own creativity. It was an interesting set of restrictions to work under, and I had such a blast. Let's talk about each doll chronologically. The first one was Sylveon for our Valentine's Day collaboration. I was trying to come up with a Candy Hearts themed doll, but all my sketches were looking too similar to Cupcake when my sister chimed in suggesting I make Sylveon. So you have her to thank for starting the Evolution snowball. <laughs> At some point after I made her, her eyebrows disappeared, and I didn't notice for ages, but you can see that they aren't there since pretty early on. Like, where did they go? I think what happened is that I drew them on but forgot to spray the last coat of sealant, so they just slipped right off. I painted them back on for this video, of course. If I had known at the time this would become a series, I might have tried a little harder on her design. I mean, looking at the Pokemon, it pretty much makes itself with the bows and whatnot. I just put her in a dress. Still a really cute doll, I think. Simple can be cute, too. Not much to say about Eevee, she's pretty much exactly how I imagined young Eevee to look. It's hard to go wrong with a nice earthy color palette. I was actually thinking about my thesis work when I drew her up. She's similar to characters I created during my final semester in college. Leafeon seems to be one of the most popular dolls. I think everyone loves a nature spirit theme with lots of fluffy leaves, and the neutral color palette with an orange accent looks really nice, I think. I was also starting to get more serious about shooting my dolls outdoors, so she had a really nice photo shoot. The flat ears and tail were kind of fun too, that was different. Here's Big Brother Umbreon. It seems his design is the kind people either love or hate. Some criticisms were that he looks too much like Anubis, but looking at the original Pokemon, I mean, the influence was there from the start if you ask me. I had a lot of issues with concept art for this doll because I was trying to decide at this point if I should do a solid female line or just play the gender by ear as I go. I turned to Instagram and Twitter for you guys to help me decide on the concept art, but unfortunately I think that made me more confused. Like, instead of asking for help deciding between two or three things, I showed the entire process. By the end, there were like a thousand Umbreon variations, and everyone had voted for a different favorite, so I basically dug my own grave, because at this point, there was no way I could please everybody. Lesson learned, I guess. But regardless of the struggle, I think that the doll turned out well, and he grew into a really cute older brother character. Isn't it funny how a personality can come through a finished doll without intending to make it that way? They've got a life of their own, I guess. Vaporeon, my water type queen. She's the only one without a nose, and I know that bothers some people. Sorry to all my OCD fans out there, but I like her without it. I imagine she's the model of the group. A little vain, probably likes to take selfies, you know. I mentioned in her video that I liked the original Laguna doll she was based on, and I have since acquired another freshwater Laguna doll to keep as is, so that was lucky. Espeon was the first doll with a very obvious tie into a real world country, by which I mean the Vietnamese inspiration is very clear in her design. Jolteon was vaguely European, and Umbreon was sort of an Egyptian-Japanese hybrid. But this was when I became very inspired to start drawing inspiration from cultures around the world. I had some trouble getting her colors just right, but I'm really pleased with Espeon. Everybody loves fancy hair, doodads. 
The touches of red in both Espeon and Umbreon tie them together nicely, too. Fans of Pokemon will know that they were released as a pair in Generation 2. One of my favorite Pokemon, Jolteon. He's the only one with a weapon. I don't know why nobody else got one. I went in thinking none of the characters would have weapons because the Pokemon themselves are supposed to be the weapons, you know. But I just got rolling with the handsome Final Fantasy-esque knight idea and BAM, he got a sword. I think since he's the only Pokemon without a tail also, he needed some kind of design element that added interest to his silhouette. So far I've managed to defend him for my cat who loves to eat my doll's spun foam armor, so that's good. Maybe my favorite doll out of the whole group is Glaceon, only because she hits all of my favorite design attributes. Which is ironic, because of all the evolutions, Glaceon is actually my least favorite design. I love petite dolls, bangs, and poofy clothes. This was also the doll I discovered Walker Color's shoe tutorials on, so that new knowledge gave Glaceon the edge over the previous dolls in the shoe department anyway. If you notice in the camping scene, her hair did change color to purple, and I feel like such an idiot. At the time of her reroute, I just used that hair because it was blue and I had it on hand. I honestly didn't think the color change hair worked that well and figured it wouldn't be a problem, but clearly the formula has improved since I was a kid, and Glaceon's hair reacts to temperature differences really easily. So kudos to the chemists behind that, and no kudos to me for using color change hair in a doll that's supposed to be a winter doll. If I want to take any photos of her out in the snow, I'll have to photoshop the hair back to blue. Oops. Flareon. Similar to Umbreon in that she wasn't as popular as her sisters. The biggest criticism I receive is that her skin is way too red, and to be fair, the concept art I showed everyone for weeks did use the new Flareon artwork color palette, which was orange, so my sudden change of mind must have surprised a lot of people. She is very vibrant, and the camera blows the saturation even more out of control than it is in real life. And I'll admit, I didn't feel Flareon was my best effort either, but there was a lot going on behind the scenes that might help explain that. I caught a bad cold right when my mom was coming to visit early in October. It was the worst possible time to get sick because I wanted to finish the Evolution series complete with a complicated ending skit, and I was orchestrating a huge Halloween collaboration with a solid deadline, and my Halloween video was also going to have a complicated ending skit, so there was a lot of work, not much time to do it, and I was sick. Not that I'm trying to make excuses or anything, but maybe I should have waited until after Halloween to make Flareon, but I didn't want to keep everyone hanging for the last Evolution doll for that long, you know? But anyway, I agreed that she was very red, so just last week I did some off-camera touch-ups. I used watered down acrylics to add an orange gradient tone to her face and hands, darkened her lip color so that you could actually see her lips, the no makeup look I was originally shooting for just wasn't working, and repainted the eyebrows to be much fluffier. I also toned all of her hair towards a blonde color to make it less contrasty with her skin, and with the new modifications I think she finally feels done, so too late for her video, but I can show you now at least. So that's the whole complete delightful Eevee family. But enough about the dolls. There's some new artwork I want to show you guys. You've seen the concept art for the dolls, but grouped all together, they don't match in terms of proportion or even style, do they? I clearly wasn't thinking about grouping the artwork together in the end when I was drawing each one individually. Like, why is Espeon so realistic? So I wanted to redraw some of them so that they matched for a more pleasing lineup. Then I thought, hey, a lot of people expressed interest in seeing how I would have made each character in the opposite gender. So to satisfy your curiosity, here's a full set of designs. Before anyone gets their hopes up though, I won't be making any more dolls. I'm satisfied with my set. But it was fun to drop some more concept art. Also, if you'd like to cosplay any of my designs, please feel free. I only ask that you credit me in any photos you post. I think it's any character concept artist's dream to see their designs fully realized as a life-size cosplay, so I'm really flattered there's been so much interest. If you post photos to Instagram, make sure you tag me because I would love to see. That would just blow my mind. It 
was so much fun making a series out of these guys. Obviously, I'm a huge Pokemon fan, and I always have been, so thank you all so much for watching and sharing your love and enthusiasm for doll customizing with me. I learned so much from you guys, and we really have a fantastic community here on YouTube. Before I say goodbye, I've put photos and artwork of the EVs up on my Society6 store for anyone wanting to buy delightful merchandise, perhaps for a Christmas gift. There are prints and products like phone cases and shirts featuring a variety of my artwork, from photos of the dolls to the logo and the Enyoung artwork. I bought some for myself to see the quality firsthand, and Society6 does a great job. So if you're interested, take a look. Thanks! Stay artsy! Annyeong!